Okay, so here we are going to work on Gaskell problem uh, 4.1. And this is from whatever, third edition. So perhaps they've changed the numbers with most recent editions, but the problems are probably all, all very similar. So in this problem, we start out with a system, two chambers, and there's a partition in that. On one side, we have one mole of species A. On the right, we have one mole of species B. And these are at the same And these are gases. These are the same temperature and pressure. And they're ideal gases. The question is, as we remove that partition to allow the A atoms and the B atoms to migrate, what is the change in the entropy? So we've basically created an ideal system in which, you know, you can think of this as having a, a bunch of uh, equally distributed A atoms. And I draw them in boxes because I'm a, I'm a solid state person. And B atoms in boxes, and when they become mixed, you have some degree of entropy change. So this becomes a counting problem, right? In the initial state, Call this uh, S1. If K natural log of omega, because it's a perfect system, and we're treating it as though all of these are perfectly occupied because it's an, a perfect gas that's just distributed itself uniformly. It's a perfect system. So that is one, which we get zero. So then as they mix, how do we describe the number of ways that they can mix? And we know that we're making this approximation that the, uh, the arrangement with the maximum number of of uh, <coughs> of arrangements is approximately the total. So this means we don't have to go through and differentiate, but we just have to figure out the total number of ways that we can mix these together. And we know from lecture and from the Gaskell textbook that this can be written an A plus N B factorial over an A factorial and B factorial, where A is the number of A items to be put in the lattice, B is the number of B atoms to be put in the lattice, and then we let factorial. And in this case, we have an A equals n, b, and we'll just call that n. So case one, n, a equals n, b equals n, we're left with omega is equal to 2n factorial over 
to n factorial. And I took and I messed around this a little bit with factorial algebra and nothing really came out of it, right? It was a, uh, it didn't re really reduce in a, in a pretty fashion. So that brought me to S2 is equal to the Boltzmann constant natural log 2n, oops, factorial over 2n factorial as our solution. Well, not exactly. That kind of, well, you're not going to be solving it that way, right? Because putting in n, uh, you know, Avogadro's number is, is not going to come out. So we need to, excuse me, we need to apply a little bit of algebra here. And that's going to allow us to write K natural log 2n factorial minus natural log 2n factorial is equal to K, excuse me, natural log 2n factorial minus natural log of 2 plus n, the well, natural log of n factorial. To solve this, we're going to work with the Stirling approximation. So the Stirling approximation, is T I R L, it gives us that the natural log of a factorial is approximately x ln x minus x, and that's going to allow us to address this and this. So applying the Stirling approximation, we get, oops, we get Boltzmann constant 2n natural log 2n minus 2n minus natural log of 2 from above minus the quantity n natural log of n minus n and we can take that to n and expand upon that to get uh, k 2n natural log 2 minus natural log n minus 2n minus natural log 2 minus n natural log of n plus n, you know, carrying our negative sign across. <clears throat> Expanding K 2n natural log 2 plus 2n natural log n minus 2n minus natural log 2 minus n natural log n plus n. Now collecting on the, uh, the natural logs, we get k 2n minus 1 natural log of 2 plus 2n minus n natural log of n minus n or s2 is equal to k 2n minus 1 natural log of 2 
plus 2n minus n natural log of n minus n. And here we have uh, n is equal to 1, right? That's how we set up our problem. So that gives us S2 is k2 minus 1 natural log of 2 plus 2 minus 1 natural log of 1 minus 1. Well, that is 0. So we get S2 is equal to k natural log 2 minus 1. Okay, so that's a fairly significant simplification. Let's go on to case two. And in case two, the, the book says, uh, imagine that there are two mole, excuse me, two mole of species A or B, whatever, it doesn't really matter. You have a two to one ratio. And the picture, at least in my mind, is going to look like this, two mole A, one mole B. And it has to look like that because I think that to really be a, a fair problem, we need to have the, the pressures remain constant. And I think that's implicit in this problem. So in case two, we have number of, of A is equal to 2 times the number of B is equal to 2N. So going back, we have <clears throat> omega is equal to 2N plus N factorial over 2N factorial N factorial, which is 3N factorial over 2n factorial n factorial. And again, factorial algebra doesn't help much. So we're going to jump into computing the entropy. S2 is equal to k natural log of 3n factorial over 2n factorial n factorial. Which is k natural log 3n factorial minus natural log 2n factorial minus natural log n factorial. Applying Sterling, we get approximately k 3n natural log 3n minus 3n minus the quantity 2n natural log 2n minus 2n minus the quantity n natural log n minus n. And we can collect on this to be k 3n natural log 3 plus 3n natural log n. So, oh, sorry, expanding out these terms. <clears throat> minus 3n minus 2n natural log 2 minus 2n natural log n plus 2n minus n natural log n 
plus n. And collecting on the logarithm terms, we get <clears throat> k 3n minus 2n minus n natural log n plus minus 3 plus 2 plus 1 n plus 3n natural log 3 minus 2n natural log 2. So that is 0. That is 0. So here we get S2 is equal to K 3N natural log 3 minus 2N natural log 2. And, uh, you know, you look at this, you kind of start wondering if there's a solution for, uh, you know, any, uh, let's call it a, uh, X N A is equal to Y N B. Is there some general solution for that? Possibly. I haven't thought about it, but, uh, we do have, a we do have a solution here. And the, the third case is when you have one mole A, one mole A. And then, you know, S2 is still equal to zero because they're both perfect. So this is a problem, problem 4.1 in Gaskell, uh, third edition.